through my day, I think about all these things that I want to share with my puppy owners from, I just got a text, it was a cute picture of a puppy touching an infant's foot and just reaching out and reminding the puppies are not to be touching the babies. They're not to be touching the baby's things. They're not to be touching the baby's bed, whether the baby's in it or not. The truth is your puppy can smell just fine from across the room. They don't need to get up next to your baby to smell them. So the psychology behind that is, why would we say don't allow the puppy to touch the baby or the baby's things? And even the children, we don't really want them interacting with children under eight or nine years old. <clears throat> the puppy is never going to believe that the children are faster, braver, smarter, or stronger, okay? Especially as this puppy grows. The child's not going to be stronger. At eight months old, the puppy can be 80 pounds or more, which they're outgrowing the children at a speedy rate. So, we need to ensure that this puppy never take the children as his or her siblings. If you've ever watched puppies, young dogs, they're always struggling against one another, constantly hitting each other, fighting each other. Now, typically it doesn't break out into a real fight, but it can when they're a little bit older. They are trying to push against each other and every other member in the pack to see where their place is in the pack. And so people have this idea that they're going to buy a cute puppy and it's just going to mysteriously and miraculously turn into this wonderful, socially well-adjusted <coughs> adult dog and that's not true. We cannot leave our children to raise themselves, nor would you want to leave your children to allow the world to raise them. Well, it's the same way with our puppies. Don't leave them to raise themselves. Don't leave them for the other dogs to raise. That's our responsibility if we want a healthy, social, emotionally stable, and emotionally able to control their emotions. So I'll just that I'm trying to pick on anybody, but for an example, I picked up a nine-month-old, so she's almost in her adult body. At nine months, they may gain another 20 pounds, but their their frame is typically is about as tall as they're going to get at nine months old. So this uh, puppy, it's not a puppy, it's 80, 90 pounds, probably about 80 pounds, has not practiced self-control, monitoring and maintaining her own emotions. So that is a problem because when she comes up to me, she pushes against me because she's used to pushing her people over and being in charge. She may be large, but she's not in charge of me, and I quickly put her back in her place. So I was walking her with a prong collar. So the first thing she did when I snapped a leash on her collar was drag me. And I knew better than not to immediately put a prong collar on her. So after pulling my shoulder, I got a prong collar on her, and wow, she doesn't pull anymore if you use them correctly. And I'm not saying it didn't take quite a few corrections, but she didn't like that at all. If I could, I wish I could, I don't know how to cut this video up into sections and help people understand. So think about it this way, if you'd like to think about it this way. If I'm leading a thousand pound horse, I'm not strong enough or big enough. Now, if I tied him to the tractor, I might, the tractor's stronger than that horse, but I'm not stronger than a horse. So I have to keep my horses with me mentally and emotionally, not physically. And I see this mistake that so many people make 
that's why people use harnesses. I had someone the other day say, I use a harness, I just pick my dog up. I said, the dog weighs more than me. That's not possible. I'm not picking the dog up. And you're not teaching the dog to emotionally stay with you emotionally. You're not, you don't have to physically manhandle these dogs. So the problem is they're, the dog is not being trained and the dog is not learning how to control their own emotions. When I have a wild horse, they want to run off, fight or flight. Typically a horse will pick flight. Not to say they won't ever fight. And it's the same way in a dog, in a dog not that they typically pick a fight and all out fight. And I've had a few pick a fight with me. I've had a few. If it wasn't for God, they would have won. Uh, and these are dogs typically that have pushed their humans around that have come back. And it, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Uh, so how are we keeping these dogs from dragging us? I mean, I would have ate dirt. This dog has zero recall when I call her. She gives me the middle finger. You know why? Zero respect. So I can tell you, without respect, you're not going to get any obedience without respect. And I've had people call me and say, can you teach my dog to come when I call? I said, I can teach your dog to come to me when I call. Yesterday, William and I went down to scrub the water tank on the horses. And when I whistled and hollered for Harley, they come thundering over the hill. I couldn't even see them. I didn't see them, but he heard me. When Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. I just love that. May we know the voice of the Lord. My horses know my voice, and it's good when they come to me. They've got plenty of green grass. I'm not graining them or haying them. I haven't had to all winter. <clears throat> In fact, I need to throw out this grain. I've had it so long. I'm not fed it. They come to me because it's a good place to be. I rub their back where they can't get any other, even rubbing on the ground, they can't get, like I can rub their back. So, and when we call our dogs, I know I just keep switching topics, but some, a little bit related. When you call your dog, number one, I don't call my dogs like I'm gonna beat them up. I mean, I want to sometimes, but enough, I told you, Abby chewed on my baseboard, and then she went up and chewed on the drywall, and I was livid. I wish I did not catch her, or I would have taken a stick after her. That's not allowed. We don't pee in the house, we don't poop in the house, and we don't chew on things in the house. That's what all the things we do in my house. I am not okay with my dogs tearing my stuff up. It's, it's senseless. There's no point in it. Don't let your dogs chew your stuff up. Okay, so really that changed it and now it's not printing. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to get with Lily. She's in the middle of printing. Um, so I'm going to stop this and I'm going to start another one and I'm going to see if I can use some bits and pieces of this. Anyway, I'll just upload this to I don't know, general training. It's like my miracles happen. Miracles happen. So I do kind of want to wrap up thinking about this new girl that I just got back. She's a sweet puppy. I'm not saying that she's not a sweet puppy, young adult. She is, but she has zero respect. And if she wasn't so sweet, she could be a dangerous dog. But she's not a dangerous dog. But she's had several corrections since I've had her. And yesterday, I walked in this front yard with her. And the first thing she did is come up and she put her foot on me. Boy, that made me mad. I caught her right there with the tip of my shoe. And I just had on Crocs. They're rubber shoes. I didn't hurt her. But I made her think about coming up and putting her foot on me. William's eyes get big. He's like, Ooh. now I'm not advocating kicking your dog, but I am advocating correcting them. 
and you can catch them right here like that. They bite their tongue. Yeah. Nobody puts their feet on me. Anyway. I'm talking about my dogs. Don't put your feet on me. Don't jump on me. That's not allowed. I remember I got a very sweet dog. She's as big as Bestie. She's a big girl. And she jumped on my husband's mother. My husband's mother's she was in her late 70s then. She's 82 or 83 now. That was the last time she jumped on anybody. When I got done with her, she's like, oh, I know. I do that no more. I said, you're right. You don't want to do that anymore. Now, a little bit of that goes a long ways when they're young, but you wait until they get in their adult body, and you might have to correct them more than more than once or twice. So let's talk about that, too. What is the difference between correction and punishment. Punishment is when you're mad and you're going to make somebody pay because emo emotionally. That's that's that there's no love in punishment, okay? And we're not we're not doing our dogs any good to do that. But correction is what God gives us. He corrects us because he loves us. In fact, scripture says you're his son if he corrects you. If he doesn't correct you, you're not his son. Now, I want to be God's son and daughter, right? So, if you give your dog what they don't want when they do a behavior, they're going to do less of that behavior. And if they get what they do want, be it treats, attention, uh, their way. So, when you're walking and they drag you to the next spot to sniff... <laughs> they're getting their way. They got to go where they wanted and sniff what they wanted. So, that's... They got rewarded for pulling on you. So, they need to get what they don't want and they will stop that behavior. I promise you, they will stop that behavior. And again, a little bit goes a long way if you will just correct them as puppies. The other thing, they're dogs. They're not humans, they're dogs. Don't ever try to make your dog human. It's like trying to teach a pig to sing. It'll just drive you crazy and frustrate the pig. Just stop it, okay? I know I have loved some dogs. It, I know this is wrong, but in a way, my, for my love tank was more full from this dog than from my children. I know that sounds stupid and bizarre, but I was that close. She was my friend. <clears throat> and I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's the truth. She was my sidekick, my partner, and my friend. But I did not make her human. So, uh, correct them. They need corrected. They need limits, and that's the only way they're going to respect you. If you, so here's the problem: is this? I call it pop psychology. It's actually demonic psychology. When people want to pretend like uh, not training their children and disciplining their children, that they're somehow being wonderful and amazing and so loving. That's not true. God says if you do not train and discipline your children, you hate them. He says that in Proverbs. A man who hates his children does not discipline them. And you remember King David, it said if you read this, I don't know if this was in 1st or 2nd Samuel or 1st or 2nd Kings where it's chronicling the kings, it said King David did not discipline his sons and it cost him it cost him actually it cost him his kingdom for a while when Absalom took over slept with his concubines dishonored King David King David was running for his life his own son and the scripture said it's because David did not discipline his sons so I don't know if David was makes me think he was over harshly disciplined himself as a child and I'm not saying I'm not saying all law and no love. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we need both. You need law and you need love. I remember one time 
this was a, a Bachelor when it first came out, and I watched a couple of episodes. Okay, I can guess I did. And this question was asked of these women, which I think is a little ridiculous. But anyway, the question was, what is more important, justice or grace? And just the question, just the question kind of really upset me. I'm like, why is this upsetting me, God? Why, why, why? So I just asked God about this. And he said, because the answer is not justice and it is not grace or mercy. You know, I don't remember what they said. Maybe it was justice or mercy. Maybe they said mercy. He's, and this is what God told me. He said, I am a balance between both. I am law and I am love. I am justice and I am mercy. And in fact, there's a whole chapter that says his mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. And they are. I like to think sometimes when I think about that, I think about God having this great big bowl. And he's mixing up biscuits. He's mixing up biscuit dough. And he's going to put them in the oven. And those biscuits, biscuits are going to rise. And they're going to smell so good for breakfast. And that's his mercies are new every morning. He gives us a clean slate every morning. And, and I love that. And yet God is not afraid to discipline us for our own good. We cannot just keep continuing in our sin and our doing wrong because sin brings death. The wages of sin is death. Make make sure that you know that the enemy pays his wages. If you sin, he will bring you death at whatever degree you wish to sin. That's just a, a law of the universe, like gravity. So, Okay, I got to call Lily back. I don't know how I got off on all of that. Just, okay, so here's my point. I have a point. People think that they're going to damage the dog is not going to love me if I correct them. That's a lie. There is no love without respect. There's no obedience without respect. And I heard this. I think John Bevere said this. He had interviewed, I don't remember who it was, but it was somebody. It was a big name preacher that had fallen into sexual sin, which is, oh my gosh, it's devastating for the church, for the people that loved him, for his own marriage, his own family. It was just devastating. You know, and I just think about, sure, he could get forgiveness, but how many people were jaded? How many people were injured? How many people might not make heaven because he chose to be selfish and do this? That's not okay. So John Bevere interviewed him and he said, when did you quit loving God? He said, I never quit loving God in all of this. Even when I was in sin, I loved God, but I didn't respect him. That fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And anybody who tells you, oh, God is our daddy, and I'm not saying he's not, but the scripture says we are to fear and reverence the Lord. Not fear that he's going to send us to hell, but we but we reverence him. <clears throat> and I know Tommy said this the other day. He's a prophet, T-O-M-I. He has a twin brother named Toby. And they're beautiful black men. Because you can't tell them apart. He said, God is not a western civilization God. He's an Eastern where respect comes before love. <clears throat> and I would have to agree with him. And again, if we're talking about dog training, you can just put that on the sticky side. I'm headed to the airport of your brain. If your dog does not respect you, they're probably not going to obey you. So I, you need to think, have I been all Buddha Buddha baby, come here, I love you, here's a treat. They think you're just a treat factory. Toink, 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 put your feet on them and treats fall out. I'm not a treat factory. And I can tell you, my dogs respect me, that's why they don't fight with one another, because they know I'm the leader of the pack. 
and I don't allow fighting amongst them. At least not when I'm present. And without that, there would be constant fighting among the pack to see who was the leader. So we don't need to do that because they know I'm the leader. I don't allow fighting. And yes, sometimes you do need to be physical with them. So back to the difference between punishment and correction. We're not punishing our dogs. We are correcting them, helping them. And I can tell you, if your dog doesn't learn their place in the family at the bottom of the pack and respect people, your dog's probably going to need a bullet as an adult. If they, are, if you haven't ever gotten them out and socialized them and they're fearful of being out in public, that's on you. That's on you that you haven't done a good job with your dog. Your dog should get out at least three times a week to town to meet people to have a good time. That's a whole other topic, what is and what is not socialization. Socialization, meeting other dogs is a very small part of being a well-adjusted, socialized dog, okay? They're not Labrador Retrievers. They don't want to be friends with everybody. They have a few friends, very few friends that they trust. Everybody else they could care less about. Go do your own thing, I'm doing my own thing. So, anyway, i have got to call Lily back. I will leave you with this thought. God is in perfect harmony and he is the perfect balance of love and law, mercy and justice. In fact, there's a scripture, I don't know if this is in Isaiah, that says God's throne is established. It is built on justice and righteousness. His throne sets on justice and righteousness. That's, I find that. I'll try to put that in the comments where that's at. Or if you find it first, tell me where it's at.